welcome to Reflections, where we offer you just a little bit of church. Today's lesson is a harbinger of what is to come for Jesus and my brother Rick. Enjoy. A reading from Luke's Gospel. Some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Here ends the reading. Imagine if your favorite holy person, your miracle man, heard that they were being sought by the nation's supreme leader for execution. And then that prophetic friend suggested that he, like all prophets, must be killed in Jerusalem. I would be disbelieving. I would ask, how could this man who teaches and heals and performs miracles and is increasingly proving that he is the Son of God ever die? He cunningly escapes evildoers and ties the tongues of all doubters while chasing evil demons out of any who come near him. Surely the disciples must have thought, Jesus cannot die. It is easy to forget how the followers of Jesus felt during these times, because we know the rest of the story. I lost one of the great holy men of my life in December. My brother Rick was a devout Christian who expanded God's kingdom over his 69 years, teaching individuals and healing others' relationships throughout his many years of following Christ. His program of Telemachus taught intergenerational mentoring, a skill lost over the past century as young adults moved away from the buttressing of support within a multi-generational network of family and friends. His work was born of a reflection on the past and a prophetic view of the future. And as one of Rick's mentees said recently, Rick was a lot like Christ. The period of Lent is one of increasing anxiety for the disciples and for us. Christ prepares all for his fulfillment of the prophecy that he will be killed in Jerusalem. I am filled with the vision of Christ on the cross, and I wait with horror, anger, and deep sadness. It is the same feeling that I have regarding the loss of my brother, who died suddenly, too. As I work toward Jesus' crucifixion as re resurrection, I will hold the memory of my brother and, in a parallel way, work towards his funeral service in June, as I would have helped in the burial of Jesus. Right here, right now, I still have dreams that Rick is alive and still don't believe that he has left this earth. I'm going to live my life a bit like the disciples. I will hear Jesus and Rick say over and over that he is leaving and I will continue my disbelief. 
And this week I will take heart in the words from Scripture. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus and his disciple Rick were blessed ones who came in the name of the Lord. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today, I encourage you to finish the service by listening to a young girl from the show, America's Got Talent. Listen to her words and imagine the disciples and you singing this to Jesus. Have a Kleenex close at hand and enjoy. Enjoy. 